Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite quarterback hater, Robert Mathis, and you're listening to the For the Culture Podcast. This is the For the Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond. The Colts re-signed cornerback Xavier Rhodes yesterday to a one-year, $6.5 million contract. As we reported back in February, the Colts' number one priority in-house this offseason was Xavier Rhodes. They wanted Rhodes back. Rhodes wanted to be back. The interest was mutual, and they really wanted to get it done before March 17th. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get to that number. And then about a week before March 17th, they decided to put a pause on the negotiations to let Xavier Rhodes test the open market along with Autry, along with TY, other guys they wanted back, but were going to let test the market. And then at some point this week, they picked up the negotiations. They were talking with Xavier Rhodes and the target date was Friday. They really wanted him back by Friday. Obviously, it doesn't happen on Friday. And then yesterday, what I think pushed the deal over the edge was Kyle Fuller being released by Chicago going to the Broncos and signing within minutes of being released by the Bears, signing that one-year $9.5 million contract. And then I think that got them back to the negotiation table, and they were able to hammer it out. And within, I would say, probably two hours, get done the one-year $6.5 million contract. And again, Rhodes really wanted to be back. He loved Indianapolis last year. His time did not end well in Minnesota. He lost trust in the coaching staff. He didn't like the coaches over there. He didn't like the organization. He didn't like the direction they were heading. And then this past year, he loved Indy. He loved Matt Eberflus. He loved the defense. He loved his teammates. He loved the scheme. He played really well in the scheme. He felt comfortable. So he wanted to be back, especially if he's going to sign a one-year deal. He wanted that one-year deal to be an Indy. If he's going to bet on himself, he wants to bet on himself in a system he feels comfortable in. And he felt very comfortable in Matt Eberflus' defense last year. So I think Eberflus not getting a head coaching job coming back played a big factor in it. And then when you look at the cap this year versus the cap going up next year, a lot of players like Juju and a lot of guys are going to sign one-year deals to bet on themselves to go out next year, have big years, and then when the contract goes up, they all of a sudden become more valuable than they would if they signed a multi-year contract this year. So if you could get the money like Kenny Galladay yesterday, if you could get 18 per year and you're honestly not even worth that much, then yeah, you go take the money, you take the years, and then you don't care about what the cap is next year. But if you're a guy looking for a multi-year deal and the money just doesn't make sense, sign the one-year deal because next year the cap is going to explode with the new TV deal. So I think that Xavier might have had that in the back of his mind where I'll take a little bit less this year because the cap goes up next year, and I'll take a little bit less because I really want to be back with the Indianapolis Colts. So glad to get him back. Big part of this defense last year. Only had the two interceptions, but his completion percent against was only 51.8, which was higher than both Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard, who were each Pro Bowl corners last year. So Rhodes had a really solid, productive season for the Colts. So now you get Rhodes back. You have Kenny Moore returning, the best slot corner in the National Football League. Rock going into year three where you hope you see that jump. A little bit of a sophomore slump last year. You hope you see Rock take a step forward. You're going to get Marvell Tell back after opting out from COVID last year. So the corner room, although it's not complete, maybe you bring back TJ Carey. Maybe you draft a cornerback. I know they still like TJ Carey. They want Carey back. I don't know if they'll be able to get something done. But if you either get carry back, you draft another corner, you have Tell returning from COVID, you have Rock going into year three, you have Kenny Moore, the best slot corner in the National Football League, and then you also have Isaiah Rogers, who I'm a big fan of. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Isaiah Rogers, the second-year corner out of UMass. He looked pretty good when he had to come in the Buffalo Bills game wild card weekend. So I think that he's a sleeper on this Colts defense. So although the corner position isn't solidified heading into the year, as I would say the running back position is solidified, we don't need to touch the running back position. We have four guys we're comfortable with. We're going to go into OTAs and training camp with those four guys. The corner position is not complete. It's not done. But it's definitely further along than I would say the defensive end position that needs a lot of work. We need to add multiple pieces. The tackle spot, we need to add multiple pieces. We have one tackle we like right now. I would like that number to be at four. So there's definitely positions on this roster that are far from 
finish that we need a lot of work on, whether it be in the third, fourth wave of free agency, the next week and a half, whether it be in the NFL draft. We need to address the left tackle position. We need to address the wide receiver position. We need to address the defensive end position. But the corner position, a position we need to address, a position I feel a hell of a lot better about now with Xavier Rhodes back for at least one more season in 2021, betting on himself coming off a pretty solid productive year in 2020, his first year in Indianapolis. Again, he wanted to be back. The Colts wanted him back. They get the one-year deal done. I think Kyle Fuller signing with Denver had a lot to do with it, at least the speed of it. And also, not to pat ourselves on the back too much, but Jason did beat Ian Rappaport to the signing by about 27 minutes. 27 minutes for number 27. And it felt great last night, guys, to get this one right, to beat one of the best insiders in the National Football League by a half hour on this signing. At 5.50, Jason tweeted that Colts and free agent quarterback Xavier Rhodes were closing in on a deal. And then at 6.17, Ian Rappaport tweets that Xavier Rhodes will be back with the Colts on a one-year deal. So we beat him by 27 minutes. We said it was close. We were contacted by our source, and our source told us that we're closing in on Xavier Rhodes. It'll be done within the hour. And then a half hour later, Ian Rappaport comes out with the official tweet saying that the one-year deal is done between the Colts and Xavier Rhodes. So it felt good to get that one done. We never expected to be in this insider game to have sources. That was never our motive. We were always opinion guys. We're fans first. We're podcast hosts second. And we got very fortunate to stumble into a couple of really good sources in Indianapolis. But I'll tell you, this insider game is stressful as all hell where you're waiting by your phone, you get a call, you get a text with big information and then you have to figure out how you want to word it how you want to put it out and then you have to keep your fingers crossed that within a half hour an hour that it actually happens or with the coaching hirings it took six seven days for some of our coaching hirings to be confirmed and we're just sitting there by our phone waiting for it to get confirmed so it's fun but it's definitely stressful and the Colts have been interested in a lot of guys that they did not sign And we put it out. The Colts are interested in, let's say, for example, Carl Lawson. And they were interested in Carl Lawson or J.J. Watt. And they did talk to Lawson's people. They did talk to Watt's people. But there's 31 other teams. And it takes two to tango. So the player has to want to play for you. You have to have the money to pay the player. And then you have to hope one of the other 31 teams doesn't outbid you for said player so we put out that the Colts were interested in a bunch of guys that doesn't mean we're confirming that those guys are coming to Indianapolis with Xavier Rhodes we said all offseason he's the number one priority he will be back with the Colts most likely and that's the guy the Colts want back he wants to be back and then yesterday Jason said the Colts are close 27 minutes later the second best insider after Schefter Ian Rappaport confirms what we said at 550 and then he comes out with the money at 6.5 million dollars which in my opinion is a steal for the production we got last year our number one boundary corner back this year and you're looking at this roster we're losing a lot of pieces you lose Anthony Walker the Colts had no interest in bringing him back but we lose Anthony Walker so we'll see Okariki get a spike in minutes and playing time this year as we already saw towards the end of the season he pretty much stole Anthony Walker's spot at the end of the year. So now Walker off to Cleveland. Justin Houston doesn't look like he'll be back. al Muhammad's a free agent on the offensive side of the ball. T.Y. still out there testing the market. So we're losing a lot of pieces. Anthony Costanza retires. Rivers retires, although we already replaced Rivers with Carson Wentz. So this team's going to look a lot different than it did last year. So to get our number one boundary cornerback, I think is huge. You can't trust Rock yet. You don't really know. Like we have high hopes for Marvell Tell, as we do for Rock, but we have high hopes for Marvell Tell, who we haven't seen in over a year. It's going to be two years by the time we see him back on the field this summer. So to get Xavier Rhodes done, to get that contract done, was huge for this defense because we have a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving pieces. I feel comfortable right now 
at least with a majority of the secondary. We still need depth with the safety position, but you have Kari Willis, you have Julian Blackman, you have Kenny Moore, you have Xavier Rhodes, you have Rocky Asin. So you're starting to feel good about the secondary, the interior of the defensive line you feel good about with Stewart and Buckner. The end spots, definitely question marks there. You like Kamoko Ture. You still need to see him get back 100% healthy. Ben Banigou, we have sources within the organization saying that he was not a good practice player last year. He didn't give a lot of effort in practice, which led to a lot of healthy scratches for Ben Banigou. So right now the feeling is he's working his ass off, and that's not going to be an issue this year. But we need to see, other than one great play against Denver his rookie year, we really haven't seen Ben Banigou. So you're going to have to see a jump from him. We sign Isaac Rochelle this week, which we'll get to in the weekly wrap-up show. But we need a lot of help right now at the edge spots. We don't have a lot of proven, proof-of-concept guys. We need to address that spot, I still believe, in free agency. And then again, in the 2021 NFL draft along with the left tackle position. But as far as the secondary goes right now, it's starting to shape up. And we can pretty much see what the secondary is going to look like, minus maybe one or two guys. Depth at the safety spots. One more boundary corner, a little bit of depth at the corner spots as we head into the, I would say, third wave now of free agency, which is really the bread and butter for Chris Ballard. He loves this third wave, fourth wave, the low-risk, high-reward players that haven't done anything yet, so you can bring them in for super cheap like Autry in 2018. They come in, they have a great year, great couple years for the Colts, and then they go get paid by somebody else. That's been Ballard's philosophy that's been a big strategic plan of his we saw it with Eric Ebron we saw it with Danico Autry and I think we'll see it again the next week week and a half two weeks in the third and fourth waves of free agency so guys we'll be back tonight with the weekly wrap-up show enjoy the round of 32 this tournament's been great so far we've seen so many great upsets Two 13 seeds, a 14 seed, and a 15 seed have all moved on to the round of 32. So enjoy the college hoops. And then tonight we'll be back with the weekly wrap-up show. We have Wentz's first press conference to cover. We have the Isaac Rochelle signing, Anthony Walker's departure, Jacoby Brissett's departure. We'll talk more about Xavier Rhodes re-signing the one-year deal in Indianapolis. So that should be a lot of fun. Until then, enjoy the college hoops. And we'll be back tonight with the weekly wrap-up show right here on the For the Culture Podcast.